Friends and neighbors, I want to thank you all for coming here tonight. It is a very, very eventful night. I would like to um, move along because we have a lot to cover. As you know, tonight's topic is to discuss the safety of the roofs. And what I did was invite members of the city council and people who are knowledgeable and where the city is with that in respect to legislation and the rights of people who live in these buildings. And um, fortunately, we also have Mr. Cooper, who will be a guest speaker tonight. He is the board director who is leading the subcommittee on the investigation of the roofs. I want to start by first introducing my board and paying special tributes to my dear mentor, Morris, who um, just was released from intensive care, so he cannot come down, but we want to know our hearts are with him. June Cooper Stone, Secretary Treasurer, Mel Fox, Advisor Seymour Wilson, and Bob Silva, Board Director and an activist with the shareholders for a long time. We have um, Mr. Singh, who is a representative of Community Board 13, because uh, the surrounding community is very concerned about what is going up on our roof and what we know and what we don't know. So tonight's meeting is very important for them. And then we have a precedent-setting night. We have Board Director Herb Cooper, head of the subcommittee for the roofs. Bob Lincoln, our newly elected board president. Claire Levitan, my liaison. Mark Gitter, head of finance. And if there's any other board members out there, I want to thank you for coming down. I do have my friends, Nora Marino, who got me started in this political arena in 2006. And friends and neighbors, and of course, the guest speaker, Peter Malone, his brother Paul, and Jim Janeiro. Okay. These are all, these men are personal friends of mine who are very knowledgeable in the area, and that's why they're here tonight. But before we get into the program, I would love if Bob Rickon could come say a few words uh, and show us the progress that the two associates, two boards have made over the past month. <laughs> uh, it's a special night for all of us, uh, not only for the fact that we're going to be examining whatever problems we may have and what the board... We're talking to the mic, we don't hear you. Excuse me. Uh, what the board is doing and what the shareholders are doing. But what's special about tonight is it's the first time that we, as a board, and the shareholders association, is uh, they're working together for the first time in the history of our co-op. Uh, we hope that uh, this kind of collaboration will end a lot of the animosity that has taken place that for those of you who have attended board meetings in the past and I hope that uh, our relationship will only grow. The fact that four board members are here today, uh, I'm extremely pleased that uh, we've shown that we can work together and we will work together and that's a promise you have from us on the new board. Thank you. revamping of the PA system, uh, but this is probably will work better. Claire, if you would please. Uh, this is important. Uh, the current board has given us our own liaison, Claire Levitan, who will be working closely with us, reporting back to the board, giving us uh, transparency with the board, and I would like if she could say a few words as well. two things. First, she was the first person to encourage me to run for the board. It took her three months to get me to say yes. And Chuck Robbins also was very, very active in trying to get me to run. And my interest was with the debate club. 
where we agreed to disagree and to debate every issue with all the particulars. And I hope we can do the same thing with this organization and with the board. So I give you my promise that I will try very diligently to be the liaison for this organization and do the best that I can. Thank you. Okay, the next is I would like to introduce Councilman Jim Gennaro, because as protocol has it, he should be introducing the guest speaker, Peter, and we will get right into the program. And after Peter speaks, then Herb Cooper will come up and explain to the community what the current board is doing in respect to our roofs. Thank you, Barbara. Bob, good to see you, members of the board, members of the panel, everybody else out there. This is a beautiful summer evening, but you're here because you care about this community and you care about this uh, great residence. Give yourselves a, a round of applause for being so deeply involved. And uh, uh, I'm chairman of the Committee on Environmental Protection. I'm an environmental scientist. I'm trained as a, as a uh, geologist. Uh, so, I'm the guy to talk about the underground bloom, okay, when we have that discussion, which I, I've had a couple of times uh, with Barbara. And uh, Peter Vallone, the man that I'm going to um, introduce, has really been the leader on the, in the council with regard to the issues regarding cell towers, antennas, transmitters, radar, anything that emits some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, 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 any kind of radiation, any kind of, uh, uh, you know, energy field. Uh, uh, of course, the scientists will tell you that there's, that there's nothing to any of this, and it's perfectly safe. But uh, uh, many of us who dug, you know, deeply into this, and Peter has. Uh, we know differently. We know that it's important to do whatever we can from the local level uh, to the extent that we have jurisdiction and we don't have that much. This is really regulated not even by the state government but by the federal government. Uh, but just because we're a local government doesn't mean we can't do anything, doesn't mean that we can't take steps, doesn't mean we can't raise our voices. Doesn't mean, so just because we don't have the ultimate power doesn't mean that we don't have any power. And Peter, in this regard, has exercised his power, uh, uh, I think, very effectively. Uh, a little bit about the uh, Malone family. Of course, everyone knows Peter Malone Sr., who served with uh, great distinction on the council for, I don't know how many years, Peter, but a real long time. 27 years, and many people don't know that, uh, that Peter and Paul's pop Peter Sr. Uh, got started in his political uh, in his political career uh, working on an issue related to the environment about a, a dirty power plant that was spewing all kinds of uh, toxins. It was burning coal. It was burning you know dirty oil. And it was Peter Vallone Sr. that got the power plant in Astoria or the plants in Astoria to burn a much cleaner fuel. Uh, and that has uh, 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 been a great benefit to the people of the story and the people of Western Queens for many decades. Who was his counsel when he did that? What's that? Who worked for him on the committee when he did that? Yeah. No, no, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, this is, this is going back to... Who worked on the city council with the environmental... Yes, I mean, Peter is saying that I was part of that as well, and, 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 and that's, that's, that's fine, but uh, 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 so we were, you know, happy to work on that. Uh, 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 Together, but the Vallone family has a long history in uh, environmental issues, and it was Peter Vallone Sr. that hired me, uh, you know, back in 1990 to be his environmental guy for the council. Uh, and uh, you know, Peter serves on the committee on environmental protection, uh, so he's uh, one of the best members of my committee, uh, and I also serve on his committee on public safety. Uh, and so it's been a pleasure to work not only with. Uh, uh, Peter Jr., but uh, with his with his brother Paul, who has a great uh, interest in, in, in issues that relate to government and that and relate to people, and he's been active on issues like this for many years, and I'm happy and proud that he joins us this evening. And so uh, I, I also want to uh, be here to learn as much as I can 
uh, about your particular problem, and I think it's great that you brought Peter here tonight to bring his vast experience on this issue and see how we can bring uh, you know, some kind of solution to bear on your situation. So without uh, 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 further ado, I'd like to call up to the microphone uh, my dear friend, uh, 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 a close colleague and a friend of Queens, Peter Ballone, Jr. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to be with you tonight. Thank you, Barbara, for inviting me, um, especially on this auspicious occasion. Um, apparently, we have as much politics here as we do at City Hall, from, from what I'm listening to, but that's great, because apparently you've worked out much better than we sometimes do at City Hall, so that's, we'll take a lesson from, from you guys. Uh, first of all, my father sends his regards. Uh, he loves this place. He's, he wanted me to thank you for all the help that he, you gave him during both his governor run and his uh, mayoral run. He says, unfortunately, there aren't, aren't enough of you. If there were more people like you, he'd be mayor right now. Um, I'm kind of happy he is. It's, because it's a lot of stuff going on. Um, and I wouldn't be able to yell as much as I do. Um, but he wanted me to send his regards. He's doing great. In fact, we all went to Bermuda, my brother and I and my parents, uh, two weeks ago to celebrate his 50th anniversary at the hotel where he came in. So that was awesome. But let me get to the much more boring but perhaps more important stuff of, um, of towers on roof and things like that. Now, now, Jim's right. I, I'm perhaps the first person that you've ever heard of that, that started the fight against cell phone towers and, and other types of towers. When I started this back in 2003, 2004, and some of the information that uh, my, uh, my chief of staff, Kathleen, gave me dates back in 2004, no one even knew what these towers were, these cell phone towers and other types of towers that were popping up all over New York City. Um, in fact, I didn't know. Residents came to me from a story and said, what are these things coming, uh, that are coming up, uh, popping up across the street from our bedroom? They wanted me to start the fight against it. I didn't want to. I did some research. I thought these people were nuts. Towers, what are they talking about? I did a lot of research. Started making some phone calls. I called the city and the Department of Buildings and said, you know what, can you tell me how many of these towers exist in the city? Or if you can't, can you tell me how many exist in Astoria where, where I grew up and where I represent? They said, no, we have no idea at all how many cell towers exist. In fact, there's less regulation on a cell tower or any type of tower than there is on a table for a sidewalk cafe. Um, and, and I finally started to realize, hey, you know what, we need to do something. We need to start uh, paying attention to this. I'm not opposed to cell phones. I'm the public safety chair. I know that we need to reach 911. We need to have cell phone connections. I'm just opposed to this unregulated proliferation of cell towers everywhere we look nowadays popping up outside of people's bedrooms, across the street from schools, across, across the street from hospitals, up on people's roofs. So I started to look into what we could do about it. And I introduced two bills. First bill, very simple. I wanted the city to do a study. There were no really independent studies out there. Most of the studies you see are all telephone company studies. They're all paid for by the industry. That's, uh, and, and so they'll tell you there's nothing wrong. I wanted the city to do a study. The second bill was, for the first time ever, Let's keep track of these cell phone towers. Let's have the Department of Buildings have a special permit for these towers. And um, it took a long time to get those things moving. In fact, people made fun of me everywhere I was going. Uh, in the papers, they, the, the mayor or somebody said, oh, there's less radiation from one of these towers than there is from a microwave. So maybe, maybe not. But no one stands in front of a microwave 24 hours a day, which is what we're doing when they're on our roofs and when they're, when they're across the street from our bedrooms. And we worked and we worked. Um, and then I started to get a lot of help. I got help from people sitting here on my left, Jim Gennaro, the powerful head of the Environmental Committee, signed on. Um, and uh, we worked really hard on it. And then the, and the community started to, as they started popping up, more and more people started to come to me. I wound up being a leader, not only in Queens, but in the entire world. I've spoken in Canada, in London, you name it, on cell phone towers. Um, India, I did radio <laughs> in India too. And um, the community started to get involved. And I was the first person, until recently, the only person who ever had cell phone towers removed from a school, PS122 in my district. They were right across the street from our school. Thank you. And then, not too long ago, that happened in a second location um, in North Flushing, uh, when uh, Councilmember Bella and my brother Paul led the fight against uh, St. Mel's. It was a Catholic school, and they had put these cell phone towers up on the roof. And, uh, you know, elected officials, we talk a lot, Jim and I. But Paul took action. I mean, he had two little girls. They were about five and seven, maybe a little younger at the time. My beautiful little nieces. And uh, they were in the school. 
And this school refused to take these towers down. In fact, they, they decided they wanted to, but then the cell phone companies wouldn't let them. And it just went on forever. And, and you know what he did? He took his little girls out of that school. That's not an easy thing to do. These girls, their friends were there. This was a good school. They loved the school. He took them out to make a statement. And other parents followed him. And sure enough, not too long after that, St. Mel's took the radio, the t took the cell phone antennas down off that building. The only two times I've known that that's ever happened anywhere. And we were involved. And Jim Gennaro was a big help with that also. Um, so finally, though, we moved those bills through. And you have to see what we face. And you'll be facing the same thing. When you go against a multi-billion dollar industry like this, they throw the money around to the elected officials, to everybody involved. They buy off uh, so-called independent groups. They, they fund studies that say there's nothing wrong with these cell phone towers. And you're going to go up against that. And I was up against that. It took two years for me to even pass two silly little bills. I just said, keep track. That's it, just keep track. They testified at my hearing. I think it was your hearing, I'm not sure, but uh, they testified at the hearing, the cell phone companies came down and said, oh, this is a terrorist threat, we can't, we can't have any locations of these cell phone towers uh, out there so the terrorists can get them. So these people out of your minds on, on the public safety chair, there's no threat against two and three family homes with cell phone towers on. In fact, they didn't know I knew this, if you go to Israel, um, you go on the internet, you can find a location on the internet of every cell phone tower in Israel. And who do you think knows a little bit more about terrorism, the cell phone companies or Israel? So, um, you know, we, we shut them up and we made them look stupid on the stand and I got the entire city council, with Jim's help, to vote for those two bills. Now, of course, the city hasn't done the study. They say they don't have the money, but we are, for the first time, keeping track of where the cell phone towers are. Um, and we, uh, we continued, and my new bill, that's not new, I've been working on it for years, actually, but I'm trying now to get support in the council from the, from the mayor, from the speaker, to get community input, community say, into where these towers are put up. Now, as Jim alluded to, we don't have much jurisdiction, unfortunately. What we're up against here are very powerful forces. Number one, the cell phone tower industry. But number two, the federal government in 1996, the, the uh, Telecommunications Act of 1996, said that no municipality, no city anywhere, can pass any legislation regarding restricting these, uh, this equipment, this type of equipment, the same type you have on your roof, um, that has anything to do with health. You can't restrict them for health reasons. And they based that on studies from the 70s and the 80s that show there's no, no problem with these uh, antennas. Well, as new studies come out, all over the world, we keep hearing, yes, there may very well be a problem. I don't know for sure. Nobody knows for sure. There are many, many studies out there that show that this type of radiation, this uh, low-frequency, non-thermal non radiation, um, does affect cells. Our, we have so much electricity going on in our body right now. Every synapse, every nerve is run by electricity. I just got a Blackberry, I think it was over there the other day. It's different than my other phones. When this BlackBerry takes an email or whatever it does, as it's sitting on my desk, my computer will start making noises. My, my phone, my phone starts making noises that the BlackBerry is getting information onto it. Can you imagine you know, the, the, the radio waves that are going on just from your, your handheld phone? Can you imagine what's coming off these cell phone towers? And our bodies are made up of electricity, of electricity. And more and more studies are showing that this type of radiation affects our, our cells. Links to neuro, neurological diseases, brain diseases, cancer, you name it. There are studies out there. I don't know for sure. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I just know that until we know the health effects of these things, we need to be very careful about where they're placed. I'm not opposed to them. Let's put them in commercial, in commercial areas, in industrial areas. Let's not put them by schools, by residences, by hospitals, uh, by senior centers. Let's, let's not put them in places where our most vulnerable people are. Or who, who are more vulnerable to radiation, are, 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 are elderly and are, and are little kids. The bodies can't take radiation as well as others. Um, and in fact, the federal government makes no distinction about how much radiation a, an adult will take as opposed to a four-year-old will take. It just bases the same amount, these are the levels that you're allowed. Again, based on science from the, from the 1970s. So you are up against what we were up against, and we're still up against. We need help at the city council to get this bill passed. I'm working on the speaker. Um, I'm trying to get uh, sponsors, but I know you're on the bill, and Jim's on the bill, of course, and it's, it's very helpful to have the, the, the environmental chair on, uh, on that bill. Uh, I need to move it. I only have a year and a half left. We only have a year and a half, and, and well, you might have it shorter. Uh, I hope you do have a lot shorter, though, the as, as, uh, as you uh, try to move on to uh, even bigger and better things. Um, but um, I have a year and a half, and it's taken me a long time to get this done, like I said, since 2003. Um, and uh, uh, I hopefully, uh, I'm looking I'm very seriously at a run for borough president, and if I, if I do that, thank you, thank you.
I will, continue, I will continue to be your number one advocate against the irresponsible placement of cell phone towers. Um, I don't. So I know that uh, after I leave, apparently Jim and Paul are going to take questions on um, on the situation that's going on here with the with with the roof. But it's very similar to the the cell phone cell phone antenna situation because our city has done nothing. The federal government has, has hurt us. Um, the, we're up against the multi-billion dollar industry. It's like the wild west out there. People can put these towers. People businesses can put these towers wherever they want with no regulation at all. All we're saying is, let's slow down. We don't know. This could be like lead paint. It could be like asbestos, where everybody said this was great um, until it was too late. We don't want it to be like that. We want to take this slow. Until we know the effects of this radiation, let's responsibly place these towers. Let's not place them on people's homes. So you're going to run into all of those problems. And what we need you to do is support that city council bill, work on your federal <coughs> federal representatives to make sure that they repeal that portion of the Federal uh, the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which says we have no right to do anything regarding cell phone towers. Um, and uh, that's what we need you to do. I will be here uh, as public safety chair. I'm very easy to reach. Um, uh, if, if any assistance you need, any any uh, assistance of knowledge I might have, any assistance that I can be as public safety chair. I look forward to working with Jim to help you out, and, and I know that your board is working very, uh, very hard on this issue. And in fact, still have work to do on this issue. So once you come up with your game plan, I'm on board, whatever it is and whatever you need. Uh, so I don't want to take too much time. I think that's I think that's yeah, a nice for me. Can I just make a uh, question? Wow. You're going against protocol, but okay. <laughs> I just find it mind-boggling that when I wanted to put a bathroom in my house, I had to go through such red tape at the building department, and you're saying that they can put a cell phone tower in the building department has nothing to do with it? Can you imagine? The building department, all you have to do is file a, uh, a, a permit, basically, file for a permit, and they can't stop you unless you're violating fire codes. That's something else you need to look at, by the way. We need to get the fire department up there, because there's a new fire code that we just passed a couple weeks ago, which does make ensure that there's got to be certain access ways and things that can't not be blocked by towers of any sort on the roof. That's another ask another thing to bring that up or another way we can we can go against this is the new fire code. But again, we're regulating it based on safety of the roof, not on health concerns. If you want to put a little plastic cable outside here, you're going to have to spend two years going through a process to get that done. Or as you said, changing your, your bathroom, you want to put a cell phone tower up, just uh, and, you know, when they, when they put these up, these companies, you know, they'll, they'll fly by night. They, they show up, someone asks them what they're doing, or we're putting up solar panels. They lie about it. And next thing you know, right across the street from your building is a cell phone tower. And even if you want to move, you know, we get to move two blocks away, the next day there's going to be one there, too. So you're really, you're, you're really stuck. Um, I would love to stay and, and answer more questions because I, I love this topic, um, and uh, I, I need your help. But I'm going to leave it in, in their capable hands. Thank you again for, for inviting me. I look forward to working with you. Thank you all. Thank you, and um, I just want to recognize Murray Lou Winter, the political action board director, head of political action. He's behind you. And now I would like um, Herb Cooper to please come to the podium and speak about how the current board is working for the community in the respect to these rules. Basically, uh, I'm here and I'm going to give you a brief rundown of why the, we have antennas on the roof and what they're doing and what we're doing about it. Uh, many years ago, we leased the rooftops uh, to a company which installed these antennas, a legal lease. And the number of antennas, unfortunately, have constantly increased, often in excess of permit allowances. Now, the history of these 250 antennas that we presently have, uh, which I've also presented to Community Board 13 at a recent meeting, is as follows. The original permit was installed, issued in March 29, 1988, for a 10-year period. It was extended on March 6, 2001, until the present expiry date, which just expired in March 28, 2008. 
has a total of 20 years. This request is now, uh, the present request is now to extend it for another 10 years. Now, the, the type of antennas. The original permit in 1988, and this is still the permit that presently governs uh, this installation is, and I'm reading from the permit, radio or television towers as non-accessory uses in an R32 zoning district. Radio or television towers as non-accessory users in an R32 zoning district. We believe, my committee believes, that there are various radio towers on top of the roof, and that's true, but relatively few, if any, television towers or TV transmitting equipment on the roof, because most of this type of uh, uh, communication is now done by cable. However, there are substantial numbers of other types of transmitting dishes on the roof. Some of these could, but I'm going to tell you they're not presently not, could be potential sources of excess radiation. Now, tests have been performed. The most recent test, this was a test that was contracted for by North Shore Towers, was done on tell you in one minute, that test was done on November 17th in 03. It was done by a, way before I moved in, and it's a company that I'm well aware of that's a very responsible company. And that company at that time made a report, and that report was done in 12-12-03, that in fact there was no ex excess radiation from those antennas. Most recently, about four months ago, March 13th, 08, we had an unannounced visit, unannounced visit from the FCC, who came to look at, this, uh, at our three rooftops, and according to their report, there was no excess radiation. That doesn't mean necessarily that we can now stop worrying about this. What we, there have been several uh, violations ascribed to the antennas in the last 20 years, but most of the, but all of these violations have been regarding mounting and mechanical means, not excess radiation. Now, I mentioned to you what type of antennas were in the original permit. And this is the permit that is now being requested to be extended another 10 years. We do not know exactly what antennas are presently on the roof. We know there are many antennas possibly in ex uh, different than the antennas in originally uh, in the permits. So this board has decided under, under direction, under suggestions from the Capital Improvement Committee, has decided that we will hire an engineer, a communication engineer to make an accurate inventory of all the antennas that are on the roof so we know how many and what type, and also to measure the radiation, if any, on any of these antennas. Not only is it necessary to do this, the next step is, suppose we find there are some antennas, let's say, that, are except, that exceed the radiation, I'm sure that can be fixed can be fixed and removed. But remember, at this moment, there is no evidence of any antenna being in excess. But, with a constant flow of new antennas that are coming up, and there is no antennas, and there are, as a matter of fact, the present permit, the present permit extension that's requested by the leasee is to increase 
the number of antennas over and above what presently are there. And what's there is an excess of what is known to be uh, uh, in the permit that was last uh, uh, extended on March 6, 2001. So we are going to hire this engineer. Now, this is not just an engineer. This is a PE, licensed professional engineer, who has a license in the state of New York. Now, we have not yet hired him, but it's within days that this will be done, because it has to be approved by the board. But the board has already given a financial approval for us to pay for this. The report from this PE will be made available to Community Board 13. The, the report from this uh, uh, PE, from this uh, investigation, will be available to the BSA uh, from the Board of Standards and Appeals that has to approve this permit extension. Now, at the last community board meeting on June 23rd of this year, I made a similar presentation and the community board voted 35 to nothing to tell the BSA Bureau of Standards and Appeal to either delay this, the, the approval of this permit or to reject it. By the way, we came to the Community Board 13 on June 23rd and we found that the BSA was voting on this on June 24th, one day later. Nobody announced to us, nobody told us that this was in the progress. It just so happens, by lucky coincidence, that we found that out. And Community Board 13 wrote, uh, Mr. Richard Helbrack wrote a very strong letter giving the opinion of Community Board 13, and, B and the BSA has in fact uh, delayed the approval or the voting of this until uh, August, I believe, 21st. Now, we've heard, and of course, and by that time, we, I don't think our engineer will have made the tests. I don't think our engineer will have the report ready. But we will present it. We will present this information to the BSA. Now, I mentioned to you that uh, the existing permit existing back 20 years ago, which is now being asked to be extended without change, except to increase the number of antennas, without change, says radio or television towers as non-accessory uses in R32 zoning districts. When we have the complete report on the number of antennas, the type of antennas, then there will be an opportunity for uh, BSA to examine it, look at our report, and vote whether they should accept it, whether they should do uh, whatever is necessary to comply with the permit. I might say to you, you, you heard a big discussion on the uh, cell phone towers. Uh, at the last Community Board 13 meeting, uh, the question was asked, by the Community Board 13 of the uh, attorney for the leasee. And Mr. Eric Polotnik, who is the attorney, said very clearly, there are no cell phone towers on our building. Is that true? I have to take him for his word, except we're going to have an engineer check all the antennas, and from then we will know what's, what is really up there. Uh, Basically, uh, uh, we, the, the most important part of our effort will be safety and that there are no problems. I said to you, the present board has accepted the, to pay for the extra, uh, for the engineering effort, also for the uh, legal effort to investigate this. But I should also say the previous board that was only a couple of months before, also 
gave us full approval when I brought this up for the board to also uh, uh, follow, to also uh, give us uh, both financial and uh, and other support to do it. So I want to assure you all that there is no evidence of any type at this moment that there was excess radiation, but we will investigate and what's more, what we will do is probably come up with a program, no matter how this is resolved as to what antenna is to be there, not only will we check the radiation, we will check it on a regular basis. Because we ourselves have last checked it in 2003, FCC checked it in, two, uh, in, in, in March. Uh, our own check, our own report, I have good confidence in. The reason I have confidence that the company that did it is a responsible company. Uh, I'm an engineer and we have worked with that company, not on antennas, not on cell phone antennas, but we've, uh, we've uh, 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 worked with them on telecommunication projects that my former company had and I find them to be a, a, a reputable company. The reason I say that is you shouldn't think, because that was my first thought, well, they got some guy to sign a document that everything is okay. I have full confidence that, that the data that we now have is accurate. Any questions? Thank you. So very much, Herb. Herb also will be available. And I just um, want to say we also have another representative of Community Board 13 here, Felix Kajnia. I didn't see it before. I just want to emphasize how strongly involved Community Board 13 is with this issue. And this is no longer just our problem. The community is also involved. And now I would like to turn it over to Paul and Jim, okay, to answer questions that you may have either on the safety issue or the city council issue. Thank you, and, and, and thank you for Paul. Oh, come on up, and, and, and thank you for that uh, for that wonderful um, report. Uh, I, I was just making some mental notes. Uh, as I was listening, and hopefully I, I, I got a, a, a basic um, understanding of what's going on here, and that you know the good news is that you own the roof. It's your roof. You set the rules. Your roof. I, I, I understand, but as I understand it, there the, 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 the lease was signed for 20 years. Ninety years. Oh, ninety-nine years. Oh, ninety-nine years. Oh, 99 years. <laughs> okay, I thought it was it was twenty years. It's twenty it was, years ago that it was signed. Twenty years ago it was signed, but it's still in effect. Mm. Okay. Thank God we're all young. We're going to see the end of this lease, and that, that's all. That'll be a good day. We'll have a party. Uh, and, and and so. Um, but again, if we're going to stick to the terms of the lease, it's for radio and television, non-accessory use, meaning that's for radio and television transmitting that doesn't really have to do with the television and radio needs of this building. Correct. Right. And so it's you know non-accessory use, as we say in you know land use talk or whatever. <clears throat> and so. Uh, and again, you know, Paul can speak to this because he's an attorney and I'm not. That the so if we're we're you know I'm one of the family now. I'm like I'm a shvoka now. So you know so if, uh, so if, so if we have to be bound by the terms of the lease, then they have to be bound by the terms of the lease, and it's for radio and television only. And television, as we heard, is basically all cable now, and so it's for radio. Now, of course, there's going to be an attempt to introduce more exotic kind of technology or whatever onto the roof, but that's not what the lease says. <clears throat> and so uh, I, I think you have the ability now in that you have 
the uh, 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 person that you, the entity that you entered into the lease with, now wants something from you, wants to expand upon the terms of the lease, you have the ability to have your expert to go out there to, to, to figure out what might or might not be acceptable to you, and you can also say, okay, based on what our expert says, that, you know, maybe perhaps two other types of, you know, categories of, 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 uh, of towers may be, in the opinion of your expert, okay for the health of the people in this building, but you could put into, but you could also require that the person who has the lease, on a periodic basis, use your guy to, you know, make an assessment of what's really going on up there, so, you know, not to have his guy make an assessment, but to have your guy make an assessment of what's really going on up there. So, I, I think based on the fact that the um, original lease has restrictive language about, you know, television and radio, and it doesn't permit all this, you know, exotica, uh, uh, and to the extent that the, uh, that this entity wants to put different kinds of things up there, which are not mentioned in the lease, you guys hold the cards, and, uh, uh, and, and I think you're you know, going about it uh, exactly right by you know, using an expert that you, know, you hire that will make recommendations you know, to you, uh, and, 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 and I think in life you need, you need a good lawyer, a good doctor, and a good engineer, you know, in that order. Uh, and, 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 you know, hopefully you have uh, selected someone who, uh, um, uh, who the entire organization can have great trust, and certainly the board has uh, a trust in this, uh, uh, in this firm, in this uh, engineer to make this determination. Uh, and um, at the end of the day, you know, we can all take, I think, some level of comfort from, from, from the fact that we're, you know, talking about uh, you know, radio as sort of like the basic technology that's going to be up there. But, you know, just I would, my own advice whatever it would be to, you know, tread very carefully into these other types of transmittal uh, 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 technology because, as, uh, you know, Peter has said, as many studies have uh, indicated, we don't really know uh, 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 with, 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 you know, great finality uh, 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 what those can potentially do to people. I'm also wondering whether or not the original lease, when it talked about uh, when it talked about radio and television, was there anything in the lease about signal strength or anything that anything that spoke to that? Yeah, that's from Kennedy I see. Uh, and so that, that's something that we should you know, all be aware of because uh, uh, you know, depending upon the uh, you know, intensity of the you know, radio signals that are being you know, generated up there, that you know, to me would make a difference. I mean, there are, for example, it was, we heard about the example of you know, microwave ovens. There are microwave ovens and there are microwave ovens. I mean, there are microwave ovens in my kitchen I would have no problem standing in front of, you know, making the microwave popcorn, which I can never really get right. You listen for the pops, and then it's like, once it stops popping, it's like, should I take it out? No, it doesn't seem long enough. Let it go a little further, and then it pops a little more. I say, yeah, I was right. I was right to leave it in there. You know, and then you take it out and it's burnt. So what I do is I let my wife make it. It comes out great every time. She doesn't apply any science. She just figures it out, um, and so uh, um, uh, and so if it can be determined that there was a certain kind of signal strength that was used for the last like 20 years, let's just say, if they want to greatly you know increase the signal strength, then you know maybe you might want to uh, uh, you know use this opportunity to set some caps on the strength of the radio signal uh, that can be sent from the room. But I, I think what we'll do is I'll just uh, 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 let Paul say a few words and then we'll be happy to take questions. Thanks, sir. There's a lot going on here, and I think your questions will probably be either answered by my brother Peter or, or Councilman Jim Gennaro or maybe myself. But I just want to give you a quick, what can you do about it? 
and, and that's why you're here. So, and what Peter outlined for you is that there aren't a lot of levels in government to do that, but they're not all closed. So, my advice and, and my own board deals and fighting with the cell phone companies on a personal level and on a community level is never to give up. And you'd be surprised, even if there's a contract, even if there's a lease, these companies are in business for one reason only, it's to get our business. So, if there are protests lodged, if the community boarding meetings are well attended, if there's pressure put on from out front, they will lose business because everywhere in this city, if not the country, people are awakening and saying, we don't want this. We don't care what scientist you're using, what engineer you are. I do not want to wake up with this on top of me, next to me, or in my case with my children getting the next 10 years of school on it. And we, we had a fight. You know, and sometimes it's not pleasant. You know, in my case, there's a church involved, so I was painted every possible different way. But we weren't fighting the church, we were fighting the companies. And that's what and, and wound up happening. We had a protest on the Francis Lewis Boulevard, and Bell Boulevard, wherever these companies were to say, we don't want it. You have children here, you have seniors here, you have families here. You put the signs out, like Mr. Singh said, at the community board. They listened. There wasn't one vote against it, correct? Now, is this up again at the next month meeting? To vote on again, or is it just... In September. And get all there. That's how it works. You know, don't count on one person to fight the fight for you. Get there. I was on the community board for 10 years. Trust me. We never went against the crowd that was there saying, we don't want this, or we do want it. And that's what the community board's there for. That's why Jim's there on the city level. Hopefully Jim's going to be on the state level. And on the Senate. It's very important because the legislation that Peter was talking about, I can't, I mean, as a family member, I can tell you, they spent gazillions on that hearing against just having accountability. So that's what City Hall's up against. But we have to take it to the city, we have to take it to the state, and on the federal. There was just a case, and I, I think Laura and I were going to talk about that later. There was just a case that um, a couple weeks ago the Supreme Court actually stopped one of these from going up. And the reason they cited was that there's a very shady ground here, that yes, we can't stop it for health reasons. But we do have the right, as long as we're not substantially with, uh, withholding them from putting these up, so that we can have accountability, so that we can take note of what's going on, and like Jim said, and Mr. Cooper said, make some determinations on a lot of different levels. Safety doesn't have to always be health. And health. You know, a lot of these rules and the buildings were not constructed to allow this. So when was the last time an inspection was done of the type of building that was placed, the roof that was put up, the electrical that was placed in the building, the fire equipment to take involved with it? There's lots of different ways to attack it. Not just on the health, but that's why you have to go around. It's almost like a submarine attack to get finding other ways. And the other way to attack it is, again, uh, with the legal world. And there are order to show causes in Article 78 proceedings which says, Stop this, we want a judge involved. And we need some time, just like Mr. Cooper said. We need some time to review the lease. Hey, you're the lessor, not the lessee. The lessor is the person granting the rights. The lessee is the one that has to be accountable. So the other thing I want to leave with you is accountability. Like these studies that we're bringing. They don't have a free ride. They have to be within terms of the lease. It might not be the best lease, but what I'm hearing. But they still have to be accountable to it, and you as the lessor can Plus, they're chopsome. And they're sure they're doing it the right way. They're not extending it. They're not sneaking in other types of equipment up there. So, Mr. Cooper and everyone else, and Mr. Farber and everyone, you're doing the right thing. But let's take some questions before everybody starts getting on. Questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah.